We're going to be looking at Marquise Chris a lot today because he is a big man who I am at least somewhat intrigued by. Again, I do think he's more of a center just because of his verticality, able to catch alley-oops, than he is a power forward because his ball handling is pretty far away and his shooting, while not as far away as his ball handling, is not exactly ideal either. So I just think center makes more sense for the guy. And I do have a comparison for Marquise Chris coming up in about a minute and a half here or so of who I think he could be. But if we just get to his defense for a minute, given that he moves around the floor pretty well, um, I, I do think he can be a not bad perimeter defender. The problem is is the mental game for him defensively. He just doesn't really know what he's doing in terms of what's the right decision at any given time. When, when should he bring help and all that stuff. But from a physical standpoint, he is the type of guy who can be a good defensive player, if you ask me. And then on offense, I mean, being a roller to the rim. Pretty simple for Marquise on that one. Um, but I do think he has another offensive ability, uh, which would be offensive rebounding, which I think he could be something as well. Now, he's, he's a better defensive rebounder than he is an uh, offensive one right now. Just got to work at it, you know. I think that could bring him some offensive value. And the comparison I have is actually Tristan Thompson. From a physical um, thing, they're similar height as well as similar uh, weight. I think there's like, I don't know, a five or six pound difference between them. And similar to Marquise Chris, uh, Tristan Thompson was not killing the game immediately. He's not killing the game right now either. Well, he's killing it in the bad sense right now, but I'm talking when he was good. You know, it took Tristan Thompson a minute, but eventually he grew as an offensive rebounder, a, a roller to the basket, as well as a pick-and-roll defender as well. And I would like to think that Marquise Chris can be in that same type of world. He's a better athlete than Tristan Thompson is, you know? So he could be maybe a better rim protector just because he can jump high. So we're going to be looking at... Uh, Chris's performance over the next, uh, you know, week or two weeks or whatever. And we lose to OKC, but oh my god, Troy Daniels is out. Troy Daniels is like the second most important player on this team outside Devin Booker. So Davon Reed is up. I'm pretty sure it's Davon based on what commentators on YouTube say. Davon Reed was the Phoenix Suns second round draft pick. He is a wing player, shooting guard slash small forward, about 6'6". And his whole thing is three-pointers and just being a part of a team and hopefully being a good defensive player. He was a very good three-point shooter in college. And we're going to see what he has now. This is the type of guy who I think if we grow him into just being a 3 and D player and he doesn't try to be anything else, then he can be pretty okay for us. Now, as far as if we have too many wing players, that is a possibility, but... That's something that we could bring up, you know, in the future. We have to actually make him a good player first. So he gets his first opportunity over the next couple of games here. Uh, but we're mainly going to be focusing on Marquise Chris. Hopefully we lose all of these. We nearly beat the Cavs. Okay, good. We're losing. Very good sign. Um, before we go into that, a little bit of injury updates. Kevin Love, who is supposed to be back in mid-March from his injury. So he's back in the game here. Also returning in mid-March, John Wall, who is now back with the Washington Wizards. So the Eastern Conference gets a little bit of a shakeup, and let's see what's going on in the East right now for these two teams. Cleveland's the fourth seed, so the Philadelphia 76ers are going nuts above them, and the Wizards are currently having a rough time, so they really need John Wall back. Anyway, this game against OKC, Marquise Chris, eight points on not bad efficiency. He also had himself two block shots, so that's very good. Unfortunately, he also fouled out, and he played like less than 20 minutes, so that's rough. In terms of his scoring, I have to assume it was mainly just due to his athleticism. I mean, Steven Adams is a very physical guy, so I don't know if Chris could do much against him in the full court, or excuse me, in the half court, but in the full court he could probably do something. And then if he ends up on Patrick Patterson, I think he could just, um, just get by him on pick and rolls and that stuff. The two block shots is intriguing. Whether Patrick Patterson actually posted up like this footage would suggest, I mean, he probably didn't, but we needed something. You know what? We'll just say he did for the sake of it. You know what? I'll even show one clip of him protecting the rim well against Russell Westbrook, which probably didn't happen either. This footage doesn't make any sense. Let's just move on. He at least blocked some shots, but 
when you get six fouls and you play like 17 minutes or whatever it was, that's a problem. And that that's a thing with him. You know, that's a part of not being a very good defensive player is you just get bad fouls sometimes. And if you're on the bench all the time, how much am I really going to use you? Similar here against the Hornets, he had himself four fouls. Not as bad as fouling out, sure. So progress, I guess. Um, he did some other things against Charlotte. He missed a lot of shots. And I think that could be because... Again, you know, mainly just a guy who can finish around the basket and can be in pick and rolls, but when you don't have a lot of shooting on this team, and we don't, then that could be even tougher for a guy like him to score. But he did have one block shot. I'm just going to assume that Dwight Howard posted up because he loves posting up even when he's bad at it. And then Marquise Chris made him pay for it. So good on you, Marquise, for not knocking down Dwight Howard's ego at all, but you know what, you blocked his shot anyway. But you still spent at least a decent amount of time on the bench. Because, um, four fouls, you know? It's tough out there. Four fouls, definitely more manageable than six. Uh, let's, let's look at Davon Reed here against the Hornets. Three assists for one. And I think he's a team first guy, you know? I don't think anybody expects him to ever put up more than like 11 points a game. Which is totally cool. He can be our seventh, eighth guy and play a solid 15 to 20 minutes a game and get some spot starts here and there, or maybe he would end up starting for someone, probably not us, but someone and just being a low usage guy who doesn't mess anything up, that's okay with me. He also was one for three from outside. I like the willingness to shoot because we can't be having guys tentative out there. You know, I, I know that you're a second round pick and you haven't played much this season, but he's ready to shoot it when he gets in there. So I like that. Finally, against the Cleveland Cavaliers, Two block shots from Marquise once again, but this time three offensive rebounds. Maybe he heard me with the Tristan Thompson comparison, and so now he's, I don't know, trying to out-rebound Tristan Thompson? I don't know, but that's good. He also did miss quite a few shots, though, and maybe something in the tendencies, maybe he's posting up too much. I already had to tell him to stop shooting threes. We'll just have to see if there's some area of the floor that he's shooting the ball a little too much from or if he's just simply not good from anywhere but just shooting at the basket with no one around him. But he's showing signs. You know, three offensive rebounds is good no matter who it is. Um, inside scoop. This was actually a travel on this dunk, but we're not going to talk about it. And it, it looks like he converted an offensive rebound, so that's good for him. Another thing, if we just go up and look at Davon Reed again, one for two from outside... So that's good. Just chilling in the corner. Apparently LeBron James was all over him, but he still made it anyway. Shout out to Jared Dudley, who's supposed to be injured, but he's sitting on the bench in the um, the warm-up thing. Another thing we got to look at, actually, if we can go off topic a little bit. Josh Jackson, five turnovers against the Thunder, three against the Jazz, and then three turnovers against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, if you remember earlier, we already had it to where Josh Jackson was shooting a few too many three-pointers, and now it seems like he might be handling the ball a little too much. Remember I said earlier, I think he's got potential as someone who can make plays, but I don't think he's there right now. And his usage just might be a little too high to where he's coughing up the ball a lot. Now, some of that's to be expected because he's a rookie, and okay, I don't want to overreact too much, but I do think... Given the amount of turnovers, it, it seems to me that it could be a sign that we're asking him to do a little too much on offense. I mean, he really should just be a a cutter, a finisher, and an occasional ball handler. And it seems like he might be a little more than that right now. Um, if we can look at the tank job, the Mavericks are currently a little worse than we are. They've also played one less game, or two less games, whatever. I don't know how to math. But an interesting thing coming up with about 12 games left is the some of the teams we play, we should be losing a lot. I mean, we're going to lose anyway, but we play the Cleveland Cavaliers at least one time. Then we have the Boston Celtics, who should beat us. Hopefully they don't have a bad offensive night where it seems like only Kyrie Irving can do anything. We've also got the Houston Rockets. So right there, that's three guaranteed losses if you ask me. But then the big one, the real big one... We play the Warriors three times. So of our next 12 games, we have, what, six immediate losses? I mean, we should be able to handle the rest, right? 
Well, here's an interesting thing. If you look at the very last game of the season, we're actually playing the Mavericks, who are the one team that's worse than us. So basically, it could be the ultimate tank bowl of 2018. Us and the Mavs trying to lose the game as much as possible. Hopefully, Dennis Smith just plays great down the stretch for them. Um, and now, to end this video, we're going to see a really silly picture of Dennis Smith's jersey blowing up. There we go. A new podcast in the description. I talk about how I became a fan of the NBA because there's nothing going on in the league right now. And then, my review of Black Panther. Shout out to Dennis Smith.